Luke Hatfield spoke to Rob Warlow, Crystal Palace reporter for the Croydon Advertiser and Lee Ryder, chief sports writer covering Newcastle for Chronicle Live, to find out about the man in the Hawthorne's hot seat. The Palace perspective Alan Perdue during his time at Crystal Palace. His time at Palace was mixed really. When he first came in he had a real impact and got the Eagles winning games, including victories against Spurs at home in his first game and Liverpool away as he guided Palace away from danger and to their best ever Premier League finish of 10th. That form continued into the next season and Palace were in the European spots at Christmas, but an alarming drop in league form in the new year saw the Eagles plummet down the table, eventually finishing 15th. They did reach the FA Cup final and only lost out to Manchester United in extra time, but that masked the poor league form in truth. That continued into the next season and despite a positive month in September, a run of eight defeats in ten games, including six straight losses, led to his departure. What kind of football can Albion fans expect from him in your opinion? In the short term, I would expect that he will assess what he has personnel-wise and try to play to the side's strengths. But he certainly likes his teams to play on the front foot, if possible, and I would expect him to try and develop a more expansive style over time. How was Pardew's relationship with the fans during his time at Selhurst Park? Again, this was mixed really. He certainly had the fans on side in the early stages of his tenure, helped of course by the results, but also from his affinity with the club from his time as a player with the Eagles. As results took a turn for the worse, some fans' opinions changed and particularly in the latter stages of his time in charge, there were supporters who became increasingly critical. The home form in the league for large spells during his time in charge was not great and that didnt help. Things didnt end quite so well for Pardue at Palace will he be in for a hostile reception this weekend. I think there will probably be some Palace fans who will make their feelings known, but then generally speaking that is nothing new when it comes to facing an old manager or player. Fans do still appreciate what he did in taking the club to its highest Premier League finish into the FA Cup final for only the second time, but now he is in charge of a direct rival for Palace, so the Eagles fans will of course be pleased if they can get a result against his team. Pardue has obviously had a mixed career, how do you think he'll get on at West Brom? In most jobs he has had, he has gone in and had a positive impact, and you would expect him to do the same short term at West Brom. A criticism that has been leveled at him is the streaky nature of the results clubs he has been in charge of have had, particularly at Newcastle and Palace. There is no doubt he has led both to relative success in the league and of course he has taken two clubs to the FA Cup final in West Ham and Palace, and it would not surprise me if he got things going at West Brom. Like most managers in this age, Pardue ISNT known for hanging around for very long at clubs. Do you think this will be the case at Albion too? As mentioned above, he has had good and bad spells at clubs, and as is the nature of football management, when results are not going well, you don't often get the time to turn things around. Some Palace fans would say he was given too long to do so there, while there were plenty of Newcastle fans who made their feelings clear when things weren't going well for him there. It could be argued therefore that perhaps he does have a point to prove given how his last couple of jobs have panned out in the long term. In your opinion, is Alan Pardew a good appointment for West Brom, and why? I think short term, yes. He will work out how to get the best out of his players and I am sure he will replicate what he has done in the past at clubs to get things going, which is probably what West Brom need at the moment. Long term, I think that is up for debate as his recent history has shown that trying to change a club's playing style doesn't always work and he may need to learn from previous mistakes to make this job a success in the long run. You can follow Rob on Twitter by searching for at Rob Warlow underscore CPFC. The Newcastle perspective Alan Pardew at Newcastle he did well to begin with after stabilizing NUFC after relegation a job already half done by Chris Ewan and then leading the club into Europe. After that a lack of funds and a political battle behind the scenes resulted in a dip. Don't forget he also won two Manager of the Year awards but then WASNT really allowed to manage. Chief Scout Graham Carr had too much clout and provided him with too many poor players. Throw in the fact Newcastle also laughably put Ju Kinnear as director of football he was tested from within too. He endured some horrendous runs of results at times and some awful derby results against Sunderland. His time at Newcastle was very mixed. What kind of football can Albion fans expect from him in your opinion? Having at your team last night, you seem to have enough offensive players to produce some attacking football. He will probably get the best out of Rondon and Rob Sankanu. If he can he will try to go for a 433 shape. 
How was Pardue's relationship with the fans during his time at Street? James Park, Pardue had fans singing his name in 2012 but that faded out after results went against him. The Derby Day results well and truly affected their feelings for him. Very few complained by the time he left for Palace. Things did and end quite so well for Pardue at Newcastle. What is the overriding feeling regarding him in and around the club? I can only speak reflectively. As a reporter I found him affable enough and found him easy to have a conversation with. But he seemed too easily influenced by outside noise in the media. For example he once mistakenly complained of the press comparing Ios Perez to Andy Cole, when all that happened was we reported fans had reworked the same fan chant. He seemed to misjudge some things like Derby Day and the need to do well in the Cups. The pressure sometimes showed with Purdue and he would blame the media for negativity. Pardue signed a letter banning the local media in 2013 and he lost plenty of goodwill. He probably felt he had to do it to toe the party line at the time. I had a couple of heated conversations with him about coverage at times but he was generally good to deal with. By the time he left the ban had just been lifted but he looked like had run his race in the tune. How did Pardue build such success early in his time with the Magpies? He was a match day motivator in many ways. But his training sessions were also bright and breezy. He managed to build a good team spirit in 2012 to help get fifth spot. However, there were rifts behind the scenes and when he tried to get some of his own players in Tompkins and Punchin for example he was blocked by his board. He will bang a few heads together and he will also bring a bit of humor and spirit to his sessions. What did you make of his transfer policy whilst he was at Newcastle? As I say, too many times Graham Carr had the final say on players. Pardue was sometimes left with players who weren't up for the task in the Premier League. Pardue has obviously had a mixed career, how do you think he'll get on at West Brom? I think he will do well. He will lead WBA to safety for sure. His big challenge will be shaking off that flash-in-the-pan reputation. If West Brom are in the top eight in two years' time that will be a success. Like most managers in this age, Pardue ISNT known for hanging around for very long at clubs. Do you think this will be the case at Albion too? As I say, that's his challenge now. He might well have a good first season then fall away in the subsequent years like he did at Palace and Newcastle. In your opinion, is Alan Pardue a good appointment for West Brom, and why? Short term, yes as he will keep WBA up. Longer term he could struggle. But it will be interesting to see how he gets on with his own picks in the window. You can follow Lee on Twitter by searching for hitlee underscore writer.